There's plenty of advice out there on what foods are good for you, which will cure, what ails you, and what to avoid. But a lot of it is misinformation and hype designed to sell books, supplements, and other products. That according to Yvette Dentremont, who's also known as SciBabe, S-C-I-B-A-B-E. And she joins us now to debunk some persistent food myths, and we're delighted to welcome you back to TVO. Thank you for having me. Well, let's get into this. Why did you decide to get into the business of food myth busting in the first place? It's a long story that started with me uh, getting really... Yvette, it's an hour show, it's so <laughs> give, me the short, give, me, give me the short story. Short story, yeah. I got really sick. I fell for a lot of the misinformation on the internet because I had something that was hard to treat. I had uh, a chronic headache that, I mean, constant headache that wasn't going away. My doctors were having a hard time treating it. I went into the bowels of the internet and found all the really bad advice, fell for a lot of it, and eventually uh, came out of it realizing this was all bullshit um, and went back to, you know, modern medicine and figured they had, you know, the That's real advice. That's a technical advice. scientific term, I guess. Eh? It's b bullshit. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. Okay. It's we, we use it all the time in the lab. <laughs> it's, what's this bullshit? We can measure it. You know, it's that's how it works. But, but as a scientific person, should you not I mean, didn't you realize that a lot of this was not accurate? It's, I should have, right? But, yeah. I mean, that after I kind of figured out this was all, you know, bunk, uh, it was, I looked at it and said, you know, somebody who is versed in science, when they're desperate and vulnerable and in terrible yeah. pain, can fall for it. Of course, somebody who's not, you know, a scientist can fall for it really easily. And I don't, th that way I look at it and go, they're not gullible, they're not stupid. You know, mm. Okay, some of them, some of them might be stupid, but I can't blame people when they fall for bad information. Well, who do you blame for the fact that all that bad information is out there? The people putting it out there. And who are they? It's everyone from the food babe to Merkula, uh, to Dr. Uh, Merkula, to the people that are telling us that vaccines are, are you know, bad, the people that launched that original study and after it was debunked, uh, you know, came out and said, no, we're standing pat with it. So it's like when good information comes out, uh, people have to be receptive to the fact that maybe they put out bad information to start with. Hmm. And I think sometimes people want to stay in their dogma that gives bad information and I think we as scientists we're always open to the fact that we've been wrong uh, the alt medicine and the alt uh, you know food crowd the people that are giving strange information out uh, they're they're very dogmatic and they don't accept new information and science always accepts new information or at least it should, it should. Anyway. Yeah. yes Let's, I'm going to direct you to that monitor up there because right. we're going to put up, so these kinds of things pop up on your computer all the time. Yep. Now, when you see a graphic like this, which, you know, five <sighs> foods to never eat, mm. and then they tell you to turn the speakers up and enjoy this valuable oh, presentation dear. on something. Okay, I see your reaction already. <laughs> what do you think it's, when you see this stuff? I, I look at that and go, like one of my rules of, of you know food myth busting is there are no never foods unless you have a, a dietary condition that puts them you know off for you. Like I have celiac disease, and that's the that's the real gluten disorder, not the I live in Los Angeles, so gluten is evil because I don't <laughs> understand words uh, disorder. But like it, it's well. when I see things like this. It, it makes me, you know, it makes me see no wonder people are so afraid. They see things like that all the time on social media. They see, like, I went through all the articles on a, on a really popular website uh, in the U.S. in just one day, and they had two articles, one saying, you know, 30 foods you shouldn't eat after 30, and 10 foods to turn your meal into an aphrodisiac, and some foods were on the same list. I'm like, well, I guess at 32, it just means that my childbearing years are done, it's you over. know? It's, it's, it's no, nothing for you, uterus, <laughs> nothing for you. Uh, but, like, that's no wonder there's so much misinformation this like the same website had two articles that contradicted each other but like there are no never foods unless you have a, a you know a, a health condition that prevents those from being in your diet okay let's look at the flip side then which is there may be no never foods but okay again oh. look at the monitor here we went to your website no. this is on, this is on your website event. It's and this oh, is now, I, it's an ad i don't know that you're responsible for it but the, this has been pointed out to me a few times so the google analytics if you have google ads on your website kind of control what comes up and i've tried to get ones like this off my site before the worst thing is like i i'm thinking about taking google ads off entirely because these keep popping up worse than that is that an ad for the food babes book came up on my site via my uh, my this is amazon your chief link. competitor sort of. Yep, and I, I, I'm hoping no one's bought her book via my website. So you don't, you don't control the but ads on your website? I, I, control, uh, I can control some of what comes up via my Amazon link, but not uh, not the Google Analytics link very well. It's their, 
they're very random and they just kind of choose what the keywords are and because I talk about food so much and I debunk detoxing ads have come up for detoxes hmm. and it's very I, I really and you hope, don't promote, promote this stuff no it's, I really hope people haven't thought oh because you know because she said detoxes are bad but this is an ad for a detox on her page this is the good detox oh no hmm. I hope that's never happened I, I don't think given my audience that it has but you know that's a that's a possibility though but uh, basically you're you, I guess you have to spend some of your quality editorial time fighting this these sort of so-called garbage ads yep. which conflict with each other yep and it's it's a you know that's the thing this information gets out there people read it and then people from reading little you know articles that are linked back to these ads you know can spread their own misinformation they'll make their own uh, you know new little website promoting these you know foods never to eat and it's you know they think because there are carbs in it or because there's you know some uh, component of it some chemical component that they can't pronounce get a dictionary um, that you know it's horrible for them and it's mm. it's so sad it's just sad to me that people are this afraid of food and it worries me that because this ads on my site that that might be contributing to it hmm. I think I'm gonna have to take the ad down <laughs> well we're, we're, you've clarified it here anyway which no, is good you recently did a talk with the uh, grain farmers of Ontario yes they produce as the name would suggest uh, a Great. lot of grains corn <laughs> soy yes are these foods that we ought to be avoiding no it's and I mean unless you have a condition that says you shouldn't be eating them, uh, they they're perfectly healthy for your diet. Now one of the things they produce is wheat. Uh, I can't have uh, wheat because of celiac disease, but I tell people go out and eat it. It's you know as a as a healthy part of your diet. Uh, in moderation, these things can all be healthy. They're wonderful sources of fiber. Uh, they're sources of carbohydrates to fuel an active lifestyle. These things are perfectly healthy for you as long as they're had in moderation with your fruits and vegetables and your proteins. So um, it. I think that people they've gotten a bad rep uh, especially because some of them when they're processed can be put into really high calorie processed foods so people see the high calorie processed foods they don't see that these things can be had in you know in healthy quantities in less processed foods um, and they just think these are automatically bad you know have them ha have them in healthy quantities have them you know as as whole food products and if you're gonna have the processed foods do them once in a while have a cupcake once in a while mm -hmm. it's not going to freaking kill you. It's but it's not on the uh, five food groups. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, well, you yeah. know, cupcakes should be on the once in a while. Yeah, on list. the once in a while. Who doesn't want a cupcake? You you have already mentioned uh, the woman best known as the food babe, mm -hmm. Vanna Hari. <laughs> and one of the things I gather you object to is her use of the term addiction uh, when describing things like sugar yeah can you be addicted to sugar it's not from not from what I've seen because you know here's the thing sugar whenever they say you know sugar is addicted as addictive as cocaine no cocaine is a drug sugar is a carbohydrate <laughs> these are two very different things so like I'll hear that you know it, it produces the same reaction in your brain as cocaine or it does this to you the same no this and I've read the studies that tried to prove this they studied the behaviors of the rat not the actual chemical reactions in their brain so yeah the rats kept coming back to the sugar because it tasted good and they were hungry not because they had the same addictive you know pathology mm. in their brain as they they do when dealing with cocaine and that so, matters that's a difference exactly and I mean this is a reporting uh, issue not a uh, not a not a science issue so I think people and I mean I read an interview with one of uh, and it, it, a similar thing happened with cheese when it came out in the media that cheese was as addictive as cocaine that's some damn it's good cheese just not a chance that's true I mean I love brie but I mean I <laughs> but I've, I I don't have any com basis for comparison to I haven't tried cocaine like it's I, I'm You're not talking making, about today or ever it's uh, I mean I, the day is young I'm kidding I'm kidding it's I, I haven't tried cocaine ever <laughs> moving <It's>, right along <laughs> Let me no, do but, the but they they they, they, they interviewed the, the person who did the study on cheese and she's like that's not what I wrote in the original study I, hmm. I didn't say that it was as addictive as cocaine it was just this was the behavior of the rats hmm. uh, but it, they hadn't studied the brain pathology so it's it's not as addictive as cocaine how about Sorry. this the the British Parliament recently announced uh, they're going to put a tax on the sugar content in soda pop which could raise it by eighty percent now hmm. the politics of that aside. Is that a is that a move that would be sort of grounded in good science, if I can put it that way? It's, I'm not sure about how the legislation is going to play out because I think people who really want that soda are still going to drink it. Um, but I also think that you know if you're trying to curb obesity and trying to change behaviors, it could work. I think I, I'm curious how it's going to work out in the long mm -hmm. run. Um, I, it's, I, I just don't know how the legislation will work in comparison to uh, to changing behaviors. But, but if the theory is 
lower taxes on good things, raise taxes on bad things. Is it consistent with that approach? It's it could be. It's I mean it, it worked on cigarettes. It might work on sodas. But I'm like soda isn't the only contributor uh, to obesity. There are a mm -hmm. lot of other things that people eat that make them fat. It's just you know soda is one thing that we've kind of pinned uh, you know pinned it on as this being bad. Mm -hmm. People are people are not just getting fat on sugary sodas. Should do it on donuts too so, then. Please, please don't tax the donuts. <laughs> but you know, it's like here, who, who's who are you going to punish? Like, I get it that you know that soda is uh, not a wonderful source of nutrition. Uh, but you know, it's I, I always I always err on the side of letting people make choices and informing them so that they'll make better choices as opposed mm -hmm. to taxing them. But you know, that's that that's just maybe me being a nutty American. But who knows? You're not a nutty American. You're a nutty Canadian, aren't you? It's, uh, my relatives are all from Nova Scotia, yeah. so you know, go go with them, they go. Um, but it's, <laughs> but there's a but. But you know, I, I, I don't know if taxation is the right way to go about this. But I, I do hope that if uh, that that if the taxes are rolled out, that it shows good, uh, you know, that it that that it does help people. Gotcha. So. What about the use of the word toxic? We see that a lot. If if you hear toxic and a toxicologist or a doctor are, are not the person, if they're not the person saying it, it's probably bullshit. That's that is just <laughs> what I've come to the conclusion of. Over, I have enough evidence at this point. Because toxic to make a really statement. means poisonous. Toxic means having the the qualities of a poison. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you hear somebody saying gluten is toxic or you know bread is toxic or uh, that common ingredients that you've been eating for a long time are toxic, you raise an eyebrow at that because the number of times I could, ah that was a good eyebrow raise. Camera but missed it, which I'm glad about too. It was, it was, but I, I caught it and it was I lovely. It was, it was a good moment. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the number of times I hear people say, you know, these common ingredients are toxic, um, I don't think like they, they understand what it means. And they'll say, oh, but this builds up in your system over a period of time and that's when it causes toxicity. They have no evidence. It's always these anecdotal uh, bits of information that they have as mommy bloggers. Um, that they're saying, you know, I saw my kid get sick on this. It's like, no, you saw, um, you know, your kid having, you know, I, I understand that it's very easy, you know, when, you know, kids get sick a lot. This mm. is a thing that happens. They're building up immunity over things that they're going to be exposed to over the course of a lifetime. But when parents think it's because of something in the GMOs or something in the vaccines or something in, you know, in, in you know, more the often than very... not, you got to eat 100,000 hot dogs to have en yes. en enough bad stuff in your system exactly. to hurt you. Exactly. They think it's something in these, yeah. in these things that are, that are common, but just they seem a little suspicious of it. They haven't applied the science they need to actually get, uh, you know, any any real data out of it. So, if we're suspicious of the word toxic, should we be equally as suspicious of the word detox? Yes, because in order to be detoxed, you first need to be toxed. <laughs> and so, whenever someone says, you know, detox, like the two things they throw out are heavy metals and pesticides. You're going to detox the heavy metals out of the pest and pesticides out of you. And generally, they say you're going to do this with juice with organic <laughs> fresh pressed juice. Juice can't do that to you. Like if you have if you first of all if you have heavy metal poisoning, all the different heavy metals have different symptoms. And pesticide poisoning, the worst flu in your life Pesticide poisoning is like the worst flu of your life cranked up to a level 17. Mm. It's nasty business. So them saying you're going to get pesticides and heavy metals out of your system and it's going to get rid of like your acne and feeling run down. That's not how that works. And most detoxes are just juice and that's just basically pure sugar. Nutritionally, it might have a couple of, of vitamins in it, but it's it's about as sugary as soda. Is there anything better to detox your system than a glass of water? Yeah, your liver. Well, the, <laughs> you can't drink a liver. But I know what you mean. And to, but but I mean you don't really need a detox. But yeah, drink water. I mean that's the best thing I can recommend for you. Drink water. Dr and and I mean the other thing I drink a lot of is tea. So mm. and and yeah, I do kind of like my diet coke. But I've switched over to tea recently. I'm drinking. Put anything in the tea? No, it's I just just plain old tea. What kind? Uh, lately, I've been drinking uh, Twinnings. They have a, a tea that cold brews. That I, huh. that I love. It's been, and I mean, I'm on the road so much that I have to dump out whatever I'm drinking before I get to airport security. So a couple of, of uh, bags of that in my uh, in in my bag before I hit the airport and, and, a, and an empty water bottle. Does that got caffeine in it? I that think, kind of tea? I think it does, and I like my caffeine. You like Thank your you caffeine? very much. It's <laughs> Better to get it that way. <laughs> Should you, do you avoid eating foods when 
as you look at the ingredients on the back of the package, you can't pronounce the ingredients. It's uh, No, I look at that and say, maybe I need a better dictionary. Um, <laughs> I think. So we don't need to avoid food that we can't pronounce necessarily? No, because I, I, I think when people say you can't pronounce it, so don't eat it, like that's kind of a, a, a bit of a, a projection error. It's just, I, you know, I, it means that, you know, if, if I can't pronounce it, this means it's bad. It was made in a laboratory. If you look at, there's a wonderful graphic. There's a graphic of a, of a banana, and they've taken all the chemicals that, uh, that compose this banana. There are things in there that I'm sure might be hard for the food babe to pronounce, but she still eats bananas, <laughs> I'm guessing. <laughs> but the, you know, everything is composed of chemicals, and some of these are hard to pronounce. Like one of, a great example of this, cyanocobalamin. Excuse me? Exactly. Cyanocobalamin. Never is, heard of it. It's vitamin B12. Ah. Long name, something you really need every day. But just because something has a long chemical name doesn't mean it's hazardous for you. Sometimes I... it means it's very good for you. And conversely, meth is really bad for you, but it's <laughs> wicked easy to pronounce. Like polio, <laughs> way bad for you. Easy, easy to, to pronounce. pronounce. Like the pronunciation <laughs> is not a litmus test for scientifically good for you. Good point, good point. Let's finish up on this. Uh, your you're in the business of trying to bring science to bear to give people information that can make their lives better. You're up against a marketing machine that is, you know, for all of your power, forgive me, a lot more organized and a lot more powerful and a lot richer than you are. True. How do you win a war against hyperbole? For as serious as they take themselves, being able to make people laugh brings people to the information. And I think if you can, I, I mean, like during my off-duty hours, I'm not reading scientific studies. I'm watching South Park. I, I'm watching Penn and Teller's Bullshit. Uh, I'm watching uh, Inside Amy Schumer. I'm watching, uh, you know, and, and the, I'm watching things that make me giggle and make me and make me smarter about the world around me and make me think. So if I'm, I look at that and go, okay, if that's what I'm watching and I'm a, you know, serious uh, scientist, maybe that's what other people want too who aren't scientists. They want, you know, to be entertained. So if I can take my goofball personality uh, and throw it onto paper, people are going to come, you know, for I, my website's tagline is, you know, come for the science, stay for the dirty jokes. I know some people come for the dirty <laughs> jokes and they get a little smarter during the day. That is true. And I'm deeply concerned that you've got me on the verge of being fired here by having you on this program. <laughs> but anyway... Anyway, no. it really was a delight to have you here. Next oh. time you come, just remind me to warn the viewers about the X rating ahead of time. <laughs> That's Yvette D'Entremont, Psy Babe, as she likes to call herself. Thanks so much, Yvette. Thank you for having me. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit TVO.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.